Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Verbling. Hi, I'm Teacher Oakley. And uh, today, at, and uh, actually again on Thursday and Friday at this time, uh, we'll be practicing for the IELTS International English Language Test Speaking Exam. Today, in particular, we're going to look at part one questions, which are questions uh, about you, your personal experience and preferences. Uh, these are usually fairly basic questions. Uh, the situation is you will sit in it with an interviewer, an actual live human being, and he will ask you questions. You don't have any preparation time. It's uh, the exam part one is hell is uh, like a conversation, a natural conversation. The uh, interviewer or interlocutor will in fact have a number of questions that he has written down, he or she, that he or she is prepared to ask you. Now, uh, in part one, the interlocutor or interviewer has to follow those questions, okay? Normally, they will pick two topics. They will introduce the topic. They will say, for example, I would like to talk to you about music. And then they'll begin asking you questions, more general questions, and then follow-up questions looking for, of course, more detail. Um, sometimes the interviewers flip-flop. They have two topics and they go back and forth. Music and maybe uh, entertainment in your community. And maybe they'll go back and forth between those two. Or Often the two topics are kind of related. Music and um, festivals, for example. Sometimes they'll go back and forth. Sometimes they'll just ask three, four, five questions on one topic, and then they'll say, okay, now I'd like to talk to you about something different, and they'll introduce the second topic and ask three, four, five questions. Part one uh, lasts four to five minutes. Okay, so you'll probably have around eight questions. Uh, the interviewer at any time may stop you. Okay, that's enough. Thank you very much. Don't panic if this happens. Uh, often this is a good thing. They have enough. They, they're asking you questions to get you to use certain kinds of language like comparisons or future tense or past tense. And once they've heard that you can uh, speak Proficiently using past tense, for example, um, maybe different past verb tenses like perfect, continuous, simple, then they'll move on. They have no reason for you to continue talking. So don't panic if the interviewer asks, uh, tells you that that's enough and wants to ask you another question. Hello, Juan. How are you today? I'm doing okay. How about you? Likewise. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, uh, Juan, we're going to practice uh, some part one IELTS questions today. We'll start with the, there are some IELTS part one questions which are extremely common. Uh, and those are questions about uh, if you are a student, your student experience or work experience, because of course they have a lot of students and then they have other people taking IELTS to try to get a job in another country. So they'll ask about work. Uh, 
that's one topic very common. Another one is free time. What do you do in your free time? And the third is talking about where you live. It could be your city, your country, your area. Uh, and from there they can ask, they can branch out and talk about many things in your area. Transportation, entertainment, uh, economic uh, situation, all these types of things. But let's start with the basics. Uh, okay, so Juan. They will always start with a very general question. For example, Juan, what do you like to do in your free time? In my free time, I like uh, reading, doing some exercise, and once in a while, going to the movies. Okay. Uh, they will then ask you, okay, <laughs> They'll probably pick out one of those activities. Why do you enjoy that? They generally are going to ask you a very general question, open-ended, and then they're going to attack you with why. <laughs> I don't know if attack is the correct question. <laughs> but uh, in any case, they might ask you, okay, why do you enjoy reading? And uh, how much was the time frame for... For answering, uh, okay, there is no specific time frame per question the way that there is in TOEFL. In uh, a TOEFL or a TOEIC test, you have a specific amount of time to answer each question, your speaking time. And often you have preparation time. In the IELTS speaking test, however, uh, part one, at least, you have no preparation time and your speaking time is up to you. It's up to the interviewer whether he, you're, if, you, if you're loquacious and you like to talk, the speaker may stop you so that he can introduce new material. But there is no specific cut-off time. Normally, in part one, what you're shooting for uh, may be two two sentences at least, two full sentences. Obviously you need to speak in complete sentences always on any of these tests. Uh, just giving one word answers or phrases that are not complete sentences is a very bad. Um, okay, so they'll ask a general question and then they'll go on to more detail. Uh, for example, what, what do you enjoy about reading? I, I enjoy reading mostly because it's, uh, it's an activity that you can make um, by yourself in solitude and also enrich your knowledge in different topics, relax, and all of that without the need of socializing or having a group of people that doesn't necessarily mean I don't like people but not always in life uh, you can be with the ones uh, you care or maybe at that moment at the moment you just don't have uh, uh, no one around okay. that is one of the reasons I like to read in okay. My free time. Okay. And uh, well, what you did there, Juan, it is appropriate if you want to. You don't have to always give a concluding statement, but it certainly can. It will not hurt you. And at some point in the test, a couple things that they're specifically looking for. They are looking at your organization. Um, one of the scoring criteria is fluency and cohesion. That means your ability to keep speaking without hesitations, pauses, repetition. Uh, but it also means your, uh, your cohesion is the way the sentences stick together. So it's a good idea to introduce your ideas one at a time. Don't repeat yourself. Don't go off on a tangent speaking about something else. 
one thing that they're specifically looking for is your ability to paraphrase, paraphrase the question. For example, why do you like reading? I like reading for, there's a few reasons that I enjoy reading. And then stop there and then start speaking your reason, reasons. And give your reasons and then if you want a concluding sentence is very nice and it shows a nice paragraph structure. It's going to get you high marks in fluency and cohesion. So yeah, all right, that was very good. A couple small notes though, one. Of course, the, the IELTS test is its a test and it's a speaking exam, so they're going to be pretty nitpicky about, it's hard to get a nine, okay? The, in IELTS, the band scores, you're shooting for between, a, they're called band scores, and your score is between a one and a nine, and it, the scores are at intervals of 0.5, so probably the most common score is around 6 or 6.5. Very difficult to get a 9. It's each equally very difficult to get a 1. <laughs> you have to be totally unintelligible to get a 1. <laughs> That's the only thing you can do to get a 1. If you can speak English at all, you'll get better than a 1. But in any case, they're pretty nitpicky. So. For example, your fluency and cohesion on, on that example you just gave would probably be a 9. Uh, the other three things they score, vocabulary, uh, pronunciation, which includes word stress and intonation, and sentence structure or grammar. Um, okay, a couple quick notes. You said uh, reading is something you can make by yourself. Well not really. You're not actually building something. So it would be more appropriate to say reading is something you can do by yourself. Okay. Uh, and then it, you got a little bit confused with uh, you can be with the, I forgot what you said, the, you can be with the ones you love. I understood what you're trying to say. You but it was a little awkward, the phrasing. Uh, you don't mm -hmm. always want to be with the ones you love. You don't always want to be social. Okay. Now, here's where uh, looking at it more quantitatively, okay, if the IELTS scorers can understand what you're saying, but you don't quite have the phrasing down, all right, mm -hmm. This is where you're obviously not going to get a nine, but you can still get a six or a seven. Okay. Okay. Really, where you get in trouble, part of the scoring, especially in pronunciation and intonation, how much do do the scorers have to struggle? Well, pronunciation and with grammar, actually, and vocabulary. If you use inappropriate vocabulary. How much does the, do the listeners have to struggle to understand what you're trying to convey? If it's basically if it's understandable and I can totally understand everything you're saying, you're at the very least going to get a six in all of these categories. Okay, mm -hmm. it's it's only when you you only start to drop below that level when there's entire sentences that cannot be understood. Okay. All right, um, fine. So they may also ask you uh, conjecture questions such as, uh, Juan, if you had the time, energy, and money, are there any other activities, hobbies, or sports that you would like to try? that you would like to take up? If I would have more time and money, I would like to try out snowboarding. It is a sport I've always have heard it, it's very, that is very popular and exciting. 
to practice uh, in the mountains, especially in Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Okay, that's it. Okay, couple sentences, a little bit of extra information. That's great. That that was a great answer. All right. It's not necessary to speak for five minutes. It answers the question. That's the key. Okay, that was very good. Um, really have nothing to say about that sentence structure. Everything was okay. The only thing that would I, I would add is, Juan, snowboarding is something you want to do when you're young. This is on a personal note. So hurry up and start <laughs> if you're going to do it because... <laughs> It will ream the heck out of you. <laughs> what's I, what's uh, a ream? Ream. Uh, ugh, smack you. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> the nature of, as opposed to skiing or even, I, I don't know, uh, other activities, surfing or what, where you can kind of slide down mm -hmm. or even motocross, whatever. In snowboarding, because you catch an edge, you just you just fall down absolutely that uh, ninety degree angle, wham, like that. Mm -hmm. So do it uh, while I you're young. <laughs> I should switch uh, uh, to um, this famous uh, this famous race that they used to make uh, in the car, but now they they change it to. I think it, now it goes through uh, Argentina and uh, the oh. countries that are on the boundary. Have you seen? Have you seen uh, that one? Oh, uh, okay. The car rally, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Baja car rally, like that. Yeah, th th there is another. Uh, there's, there's one. Other one. Famous one. Uh, Baja. That that is also famous. The the Baja, one thousand. I think it's. Uh, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, and that's uh, if I had money, then uh, that <laughs> that would be better. <laughs> yeah, snowboarding is for the young. You, you're yeah, and also uh, you because you you fall so quickly, you try you always try to instinctually catch yourself, so you really hurt your wrists. Mm -hmm. Your wrists get hurt more than anything. You might not expect that, but. <laughs> you have very strong wrist. Anyway, okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, that's the idea. They introduce a topic, then the, then they'll continue. Um, all right. There, so there are the very common topics that they ask a lot. Uh, many varieties of questions. They pose the questions in different ways. Uh, they also have some other kinds of uh, favorites. Let's let's okay. Let's try another one. Uh, Juan, starting with the general question. I'm going to change. Oh, they always introduce the topic. By the way, I'd like to change the topic a little bit, and I'd like to talk to you about um, music. Okay. Do you enjoy music? Okay, there's the very general question that's usually first. Yes, I enjoy music. I enjoy uh, music genres like jazz, classical music, but also rock, especially from the 80s, sometimes metal, Okay. Uh, bands like Metallica, and similar. Okay, there you go. Now, notice that I gave you the, okay, I gave you the, <laughs> the little signal there. All right, in the, in the real IELTS test, a quick note about that. The IELTS examiner is supposed to maintain complete and entire neutrality, and occasionally they do. You get somebody who's very stone-faced that doesn't smile, doesn't show any emotion whatsoever, does not gesture to you sometimes. But most of the time in my experience, personal experience and students who have taken the test, 
they want you to do well. So they'll sometimes give you little head nods. Okay, you're doing great. They may even give you a little, oh, oh, come on, more, give me more, give me more. They're really not supposed to do that. <laughs> but the test that you're taking, it, the audio is being recorded. There's no video, however. <laughs> so you, you will never hear them say, okay, can you speak a little more? Come on, uh, keep going. They won't say anything, <laughs> but they will often use nonverbal communication, head nods, little you know uh, gestures to encourage you uh, or or even you know m m maybe the stop gesture if you're mm. getting lost and repeating yourself they don't want you to bury yourself all right they are human and they are generally nice people and they want you to do well uh, <laughs> I was Hello. wondering something. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Because I, I I think I am a little lost with uh, the how 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 much or can you say how how big the question okay uh, yeah should be answered. How much talking you should do? Well, you should not concern yourself <laughs> with that because the interviewer will will stop you, and that is not that is not a bad thing. The interviewer will stop you if you're. If he has enough information, it doesn't mean that you're doing badly. Um, what I, I again, what I recommend in part okay. one, two sentences. However, two sometimes, sentences. sometimes you will get, a, for example, a contrasting question. Um, advantages and disadvantages, pros and cons, or a comparison question. Compare rock music to classical, what do you like about each, for example. A comparison question, by definition, you're really talking about two different subtopics, so you're going to have to speak more. So if you have a question like that, you're looking at maybe four sentences to completely answer the question. Okay. Okay. But mostly in part one... Do you recommend... It's great. What? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, could could you recommend me uh, with an example on on how to to better that uh, answer? Your last answer? Mm -hmm. Well, that was very good. Uh, I would have very little to say about that. Mention a few genres, and it, uh, it's always good to speak openly, honestly. Use your personal experience. You also gave some specific examples of bands that you enjoy. That's great. That's perfect. I couldn't ask for more. That answer was a nine, so I can't... That was a nine answer all the way around. There was no grammatical problems. Vocabulary was appropriate. You used good, uh, good vocabulary, like genre and and 80s. Sometimes things you say you don't realize that these are very good English speaking skills. You let, you said, I like music from the 80s. Okay, that's very natural and normal. That's how native people speak. We don't say, I like music, music from the 1980s. That's a little weird. It's, you probably wouldn't lose points, but you wouldn't gain anything either. Uh, okay. Uh, say hi to hi Vlad. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Not so bad, <laughs> but uh, uh, I have uh, this uh, first. Uh, there is uh, my first experience. Uh, I'm. I mean, uh, my work in uh, in Wordlink, and uh, I cannot uh, put my screen uh, in a full. Uh, like, it's, uh, oh I mean, yeah. Yeah. It do it. You're, don't worry about it, Vlad. You, uh, I can see your. You know, it's up to you whether you want even want to use video or not. Vlad, just uh, you know, uh, play with some of the icons, and you can figure out what they all do. So no problem. But I most importantly, I hear you loud and clear, and I can see yeah. you. So yeah. you're, you're 
you're good, no problem. Anyway, welcome to and Vermling. Hi. Hi, I'm Oakley. I, I hear you very well also, but uh, okay. your profile, like uh, your screen is very small, and I, I, I try <laughs> to choose, it. I don't know how to do it. My son is out now, uh, usually <laughs> he can uh, help me. Your son is the technician in the family? So maybe so. <laughs> All young youngsters uh, more t um, than uh, older people. Yeah, right. I know. Oh, don't I know? Believe me. But uh, actually, I hear you very well. It's it's the main okay. thing. That is the main thing. Okay. It may be. It may be but because of the bandwidth. Uh, yeah. Uh, one thing, Vlad. Yep. If you have uh, for verbling, I don't know what you're using, but if you have if you have a headset and a microphone, well, microphone's not so important, but a headset, it will cut down on the echo effect. Oh, I see. Uh, actually, I have not these headphones uh, because I have not used it. Uh, because it's my la laptop, and uh, usually mm. I don't use uh, these headphones. Right. But uh, should I buy it and uh, to use uh, these headphones? Well, it will help a lot, and it'll cut down on the echo. Uh, if if you don't have uh, headphones, I mean, with the, it's a very small class. But normally, in a big full class, you mm -hmm. can mute yourself, which is the microphone icon up on the top here. Uh, if you're not speaking, it's better to mute yourself and then unmute yourself when you want to speak. That way we don't hear extra sounds from your house or your street or the or the police going by. Reader, reader, reader. <laughs> you know, things like that. Um, okay, Vlad, we're uh, practicing uh, IELTS speaking questions. Are, are you familiar with IELTS? Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> He's testing the mute button. <laughs> Come back, Vlad. Okay. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Uh, okay, we, we started talking about music. Now, oh, Vlad, you're in twice. Uh, Juan, I, while Vlad gets situated, I'll ask you a, another question. Uh, here's kind of where they they uh, go a little bizarre on you. Okay, Juan, I asked a very general question. Do you enjoy music? Second question, what are the benefits of listening to music? The benefits of listening to music is that you relax yourself and are able to get more energy and rest. Okay. Uh, okay. First of all, that's they, that's a very specific trap kind of question. What are the benefits if they ask you that? Uh, they want, they're checking your subject verb agreement. The benefits, you said the benefits is blah, blah, blah. Ah, it should be the benefits are. Are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very common, a little IELTS trap for you. The benefits are, and then, sure, you, you can list your things. Um, and then. And you, also, I, I hesitated a, a little bit. Because I wasn't sure if I could specify. Because if I specify which genre, uh, then the the answer would be a little bit longer. So that would be okay sure. if you wanted that would to. Be okay. Yeah, and that would be okay if you wanted to mention something like I like listening to classical music when I'm trying to relax or when I want need to okay, relieve exactly. stress. Yeah. And I like listening to rock when I'm trying to get pumped up because I'm going to go out with my friends on a Friday night. Exactly. That's that. That's exactly what I had <laughs> in mind at first. 
but I didn't say it because I wasn't sure if that was a correct way to answer. Actually, that's so. a great way to answer. And uh, you notice when I answered, okay. I used words like relax, relieve stress. Here's a very common, uh, very very common, people often awkwardly talk about how they relieve tension, relieve stress. We use usually use the verb relieve. Uh, I listen to relieve. music to relieve stress okay. or to relax. Uh, I also used a kind of a colloquialism. I said uh, I like to get pumped up to go mm -hmm. party with my friends. Okay, using phrases or English chunking, we can call it, phrases, common phrases, they really love to hear that in IELTS. That shows natural English thinking. Okay, I've got to say hello to Alice. Hello, stone face. <laughs> Just kidding. Hi, Alice. Don't be shy. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Oh, fine, thank you. <laughs> Please give me easy questions. <laughs> okay, well, we're doing part one today. Mostly uh, oh, yeah, that's, that's why I came. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, but I, was... uh, I, I, like, I like your lessons, Oakley. <laughs> thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Uh, Alice, um, Alice, are you preparing to take an IELTS or a TOEFL or anything? No, no. no just uh, but, uh, but, okay. but yes, and uh, you usually correct grammar and everything during these lessons, so I like it. Okay. Well, your because grammar I, I, I would perfect. like to know I would like to know what mistakes I am doing. Of course. Uh, okay, what mistakes I am doing is okay. What mistakes making. I am making is more appropriate. There you go. Yes. For mm. example. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. Uh, okay, we're kind of looking at question types too. Um, let me, let me, uh, Alice, I'll get back to you. I want to check on Vlad. Vlad, are you still with me? Yes, yes, uh I'm listening to you. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> Vlad's experimenting. Okay. <laughs> Vlad, what, <laughs> what kind, what types of music do you like, Vlad? Oh, it's very easiest uh, questions for me uh, because um, I'm, uh, as I'm uh, almost 50 years old, uh, I like, uh, I very like uh, disco music. When I was uh, a <laughs> young man, I uh, uh, heard uh, disco music, uh, especially music of 17s. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's terrific. Do you know the song Brick House? She's Brick House? Brick House. She mighty mighty letting it all hang out. No, maybe <laughs> I should... Uh, uh, oh. Okay. Listen you, real, uh, well, by all means, please uh, look it up on YouTube. You'll you'll get down and get funky with yourself. It's a great song. Uh, try that I, one. I would really, really like Creedence Clearwater Revival or uh, Oh, or... okay. What well, Beatles? Oh, CCR. That's that's not disco. That's, that's yes, good, but uh, it's good uh, solid uh, rock. Uh, this group was my first group. Uh, I uh, very like. Ah, okay. Me too. But okay. Uh, one note. Uh, common mistake, Vlad. You said I very like uh, disco music or whatever. You, we shouldn't say that. Don't say very like. You can say I really like. I really like. Uh, yeah, I really like uh, yeah. basketball. Whatever. Um, I very like doesn't work. Um. Mm -hmm. You can say, I like disco very much. Okay. Very much. Mm hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is that me? That was weird. Uh, any case, 
Uh, thank you. Uh, all right. Other than that, that was a very good answer. All right. That would be a simple start on an IELTS test. Vlad, do you have any plans to take an IELTS exam? Or you yes, just... I have. Yes, you I do. Have. Okay. Very yeah. good. All right. Well, you're in the right place. Very necessary for me, and it's very important for me. Okay. May Plus, I ask? I May I ask, and actually this is an IELTS question, why are you uh, interested in taking the IELTS test? Uh, it is necessary for my um, future immigration to Canada. Okay. Very good. I'm, I'm going to emigrate with my family to, to Canada. And I need to pass my exam okay, as very bad good. as possible. As what? As better as possible. Okay, as, as better? 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 Yeah. Okay, as well as possible or with as the well best. As well as possible, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah, yeah as, okay. as, as well as possible. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, good for you, and Canada is a lovely country, and I think you'll really like it there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a great country. I highly recommend it. I'm from the United <laughs> States, Vlad. I don't recommend the United States. <laughs> <laughs> I have not been in the United States. Yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, they may ask. They may start with a, a broad question about music, and they may ask more specific. For example, Alice. Uh, Alice, do you play a musical instrument? Um, no, I don't play any musical instrument. However, if I could play, uh, if I could choose any musical instrument, I would like to play vi violin. Ah. Uh, my, uh, my uncle, he used to uh, have violin. Uh, one day I found it. It was broken already, but uh, when when I tried to play it, it 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 was it was um, there were only two or three strings left, and I really uh, I really liked the way it works that you need to use. Okay, sorry, this is going to be terrible what I'm going to say because I don't know what it is called. That thing which you have in your right hand to... The bow. Bow, yes. If mm -hmm. if I was on IELTS exams, I wouldn't uh, talk about this because I know... No, I don't know words. <laughs> right, I would, right. I would just finish with the part uh, that uh, my uncle had a vi violin and I really liked it. Okay, and that is very appropriate. Now, uh, Alice did something very, very good here, which uh, other students should pay attention to. IELTS will ask you questions about topics that you are not familiar with. Uh, for example, do you play a musical instrument? Well, what are you going to say? Are you just going to say, no, I don't? That's not really a fully developed answer. It's not going to get you a top score. Alice aptly demonstrated how, uh, how to go about uh, developing an idea even though maybe that a question is not appropriate to you, the test to her. Um, so she said, if I could, then I would. She did a lot of things there. She demonstrated a conditional statement, which is excellent. Um, she uh, she gave extra detail, and that's terrific. Developing an answer when you really have no material, there's an art to that. And talking <laughs> about possibilities or using conditionals is a good way to do that. If I had the time, if I could play an instrument, I would love to learn the violin, for example. That was really good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. And you also, you know, you also <laughs> demonstrated know when to stop, which is another key element in the IELTS test. If you find yourself, 
You want to talk about something, but you don't know the words. What's it called? The body, the bow, the you know, yeah. the, the frets, mm -hmm. the little parts that you push to make a note. You don't know those words, then stop. Yes, I would. <laughs> I would stop if I was on Good. IELTS exam. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now I could tell you. You know. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, that's good but, to ask me, so you know the vocabulary. That, that's yeah, but I I would stop because I know I don't know vocab vocabulary. <laughs> right, and you should. Furthermore, if you find yourself repeating yourself over and over again, you get stuck, and that's common when we're confused, when we're stressed out, you know, and anxious, sometimes we, we will start repeating the same information and just trying to say it in a slightly different way. Just mm -hmm. stop. Just stop mm -hmm. yourself and move on to the next question. All right, maybe you didn't get a top score on that question. Stop and use the clock to your own advantage. All right? Each section of the test is going to be a certain amount of time. It is not a certain amount of questions, except part two, which is all, which is timed. But part one and part three, you may have six questions. You may have twelve questions. It depends on how long you speak. So if you don't have a lot to say, give a shorter answer, and then if there's something and the next question you're very familiar with the topic you have personal experience you so in general if we have personal experience with the topic we're able to develop our ideas and use more vocabulary appropriate appropriately so mm -hmm. you know use the clock to your advantage go long go talk a lot about something you know a lot about or you have a a strong opinion about or you've thought about before and you've discussed before in English, in verbaling, for example. Um, yeah, okay. Let's uh, go on to, I, I I'm, was demonstrating some of the easier, uh, easier topics. Now, sometimes there's some weird things, okay? Uh, who wants a weird one? Okay, Juan, you, you lucky guy. <clears throat> Juan, I would like to talk to you about buildings where you live. Okay. Uh, tell me about an interesting building in your city. Example. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, this, is, this is a good topic for Juan, me, by the way. Sorry. I, is it? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Juan, would you like to pass? No, no, Juan, do it. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not sure if Juan's. No, sometimes there's some weird things. Okay. Alice was making a meal. Uh, Juan, hang on, hang on. Juan, you lucky guy. Vlad, you're. Uh, yeah. you're oh, you're. Lo there's a lot of echo coming from you. Okay. So if you could mute your microphone for just a moment. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Juan, what were you saying? Uh, no, that actually Alice made me a favor because uh, I was still thinking about an interesting building in my <laughs> country. Okay. We don't have many, so. <laughs> All right. We'll be... Okay, would you like to give it a try, anyhow? Oh, of course. Uh, one of the most interesting buildings in my country is the school that is named the Metal School, just as it sounds. Hmm. Why? Because it is made completely from materials of metal, different types of metal. It, it is one of the of the uh, first schools uh, ever built in my country. So it is very old. It has a lot of history, and uh, it is 
in the center of San Jose, which is the capital, and many intellectuals and influencing people in politics and other fields have studied there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I don't, Juan here, I can hear you, but just barely. Your your volume is very low. I don't know why, but... Uh, yeah, I have I, to, to switch from uh, from um, device or... In, in the ah, okay. So I see. I'm going to adjust. Okay. <laughs> but I could hear you well enough. All right. That was, uh, that was very good. And you demonstrated to students uh, another important point. They will sometimes ask you to describe something in part one, not as specific and as much detail as part two, but they may ask for a general description about something. For example, uh, an interesting building. Okay, if you get one of these questions, uh, start thinking about the who, what, where, when, why, the W's. All right? He told me who the school, who, or really what the school, what it was, uh, what it was for, who goes there, students. He told me what it was made out of. He told me where it was. Um, so he covered a lot of W questions for, to give me the details of his answer. Ta -ta! That's exactly what you want to be doing. Just immediately start spouting off the who, what, where, when, and why of the thing. And you should be able to come up with a lot of detail. Um, description questions in part one, you should be having that interviewer going, okay, that's enough, that's enough. Shut up already, that's enough. Um, yeah, because you should be able to come up with a lot of detail if you, if you know the uh, how to go about it. That, that was very good, Juan. Juan, I do have a follow-up question, however. You're, you're saying that this uh, school is called the Metal School. It's totally made out of metal, but you also said that it's quite old. It was one of the first schools. Is it getting rusty? <laughs> Actually, they... Uh, I'm sorry, before answering, how do you, do you hear me now? Because I, I a, a little better, answer. not great still, but better. Okay. Uh, actually, they they give them um, no them no they give it uh, very good care using and now I need help for the name of <laughs> the kind of uh, a material that is like paint, but the the one that you use for roofs. To yeah, protect you metal. Oh, what is that called? Now I forgot. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked you the question. Oh my goodness! I painted myself in a corner. Um, what is that stuff called? It's uh, I know the brand name of the most popular product, at least in the United States. It's called Rustoleum, and you put it on metal things to prevent it from rusting. Um, you need to apply some kind of material to prevent rusting. That's how I would say it when I can't think of the vocabulary. I would try to explain it. Maybe anti-corrosive -cor paint exactly. or something exactly, like that? Exactly, Alice. Good. All right. Exactly. Very good, Alice. All right. Anti-corrosive paint. Okay, that works. Yeah, you, on cars it's called undercoating, but uh, when you put it on other things, I don't know what you call it. Okay, yeah, that it's, works. It's anti corrosive. Yeah, that, that works. That that is that that makes sense. Okay. Uh, Alice, why would that have been an appropriate question for you? What's an interesting building where you live? <laughs> because in the city where I live there is one building which is maybe interesting for some people, but maybe it is not um, interesting at all for other people. Uh, however, I would like to say it looks like a triangle, upside down triangle. Uh, there is 
There is a um, radio, a national radio in the building and lots of architects say that it doesn't fit into the environment where it is built but uh, other people say that uh, they like that building so some some people find it interesting uh, on the other hand others do not like it okay very good all right talking about uh, opinions about something you're asked to describe also another very appropriate good w and good way to be able to give more detail and interesting very where but <laughs> sorry <laughs> Alice, where do you live again what is this uh, building? it is in the capital city of Slovakia called Bratislava Bratislava okay yeah it's it's really okay. upside down triangle and it's uh, it's unbelievable that it stands it it's able to stand that way <laughs> the arc cool. I, I can share the screen if you want to see yeah it sounds interesting sure I'd love to mm -hmm. yeah go ahead when you have a chance and meanwhile mm -hmm. uh, Vlad yes, why, don't you, yes. why don't you try this question Vlad tell me about an yes. in interesting building where you live it's very difficult to answer this question because um, uh, my city um, was almost destroyed during uh, the Second World War and the old uh, buildings were built uh, built uh, from 1945 again and uh, actually they are almost all buildings are modern and I don't I, I don't consider that uh, the there are some buildings are interesting it's usual buildings like everywhere ah okay now this that's uh, all right this is interesting because the follow-up question to this might be like this Vlad good answer I'm gonna ask you the next question is it better to have uh, older buildings in the city or newer buildings which do you think is better uh, if we have uh, uh, older buildings, buildings in uh, the city, in uh, in, in cities, uh, it would be much better because uh, uh, old buildings uh, are our history, and uh, you you can find uh, many th interesting things uh, connected with these uh, buildings. Uh, I okay. think it's very nice. It is it is necessary to have old buildings uh, in uh, in in city or in, in town. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. And and uh, very good, Vlad. You gave me your opinion, and you gave me uh, you gave me a, a supporting reason why you think so. Um, yeah. it, the only thing that maybe would have made it a slightly better is if you had talked a little bit about new buildings if you said something about new buildings new buildings are very homogenous they all look the same uh, new buildings are boring yeah. Um, yeah. just a little detail so that you're talking because this is a comparison question old new so whenever you have a comparison um, okay 20 years ago now you should talk about both things at least a little bit you may concentrate your speaking about one Especially if that's uh, if that's you know your main focus. Your focus was on older buildings. I would expect you to say more about older buildings. That's nothing wrong with that. I consider old buildings uh, which uh, were built uh, after fifties are modern buildings. It's uh, mm. they look uh, they look very similar and uh, but actually now uh, we. Uh, can see that uh, there are too uh, many stores, or many 
many let me see this word. Uh, it's <laughs> when when, uh, when the building is very high, it's like a sky skyscraper. 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 Mm-hmm. Like skyscraper. It doesn't mean that uh, there is there are uh, skyscrapers in my city. Uh, we have not yet, uh, but uh, very high buildings we have. It's like just twenty twenty five stores. Okay. Uh, all right. I see. Yeah. All right. I, so there you go. You could uh, you could have said something about that with, with that information. Um, interesting. I I checked out these uh, your you guys buildings. One in Alice. They I I do have. To, first of all, the school one does look like a school. <laughs> it looks like a school. If I saw that building and I had no idea, it looks like a school. And where did Alice go? But I do understand the people's point that that building sort of does stand out. Because if you see it in the, one of the middle pictures with all the other buildings around it, it does look... it. It's the first thing you would notice. No question. It's amazing. Okay. Anyhow, and it's interesting how it it handles the weight. Yeah, I would be interested to see how they. It's obviously some kind of architectural problem. I wonder how they did that. Did they like drill deep into the earth for supporting beams? <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Do you? Uh, okay, not. Not really an IELTS question, but kind of. Juan, do you ever watch those uh, National Geographic or Discovery programs about how buildings are made? Some famous Mega modern stars. buildings. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm a big fan. <clears throat> are you? Yeah. I also watch it. I always think, oh, I'm going to be so bored. Why am I watching this? And then I get sucked into the program and I end up watching it for an hour or whatever. Yeah, me too. Um, okay, while we're talking about your cities, now here's uh, an example of how they cleverly move along. Okay, we've been talking about buildings in your cities. Um, how about, uh, Juan, how about traffic in your city? Is there any problems with traffic? Yes, it's really so, yeah. <laughs> Vlad, you want to go first? <laughs> it depends. If you want, I, I can start. Yeah, go ahead, Vlad. You you seem like you want uh, to. Go ahead. I think the traffic is the worst thing for our cities uh, now. Uh, uh, for example, 20 years ago, uh, uh, we cannot uh, tr uh, have a traffic uh, in my city. Absolutely. Uh, but now uh, you can see traffic every morning and every uh, evening and uh, it's uh, really very stressed because because uh, too many cars polluted the environment of our cities or of my city especially uh, and uh, there are too many uh, uh, like um, I forgot this word. When uh, crowd, not uh, this word. When too many cars uh, work together and they make very big. Um, oh, traffic jam. Maybe no. like traffic traffic jam. Yeah, traffic jam. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, Vlad. Uh, a very important note for you. Um, be very careful of the ED forms, uh, ED versus uh, sometimes ING or sometimes a, another form, stressed and stressful. Okay. Uh, the situation is very stressful. Stressful, yeah. It, it makes me stressed. Okay, I am stressed. I went to the movie, I was bored. 
the movie I was, was boring. Okay. I was boring, yeah. Yeah. I forgot, you said, I forgot my grammar. Uh, ten years ago, <laughs> I, yeah. I uh, learned English in Dublin uh, in American <laughs> college. And uh, believe me, I, I could speak English much more better. I, I, I had really fluent English. But uh, during the last ten years, I have not had um, speaking uh, with English uh, men, men or somebody who can speak English very well. And uh, I really forgot my English already. And uh, a couple of months ago, I started uh, to uh, like, uh, like fresh up or no, like uh, yeah. <laughs> to start uh, to learn English again. And uh, believe mm. me, I I I I learned grammar, and I, uh, I I I I knew my grammar not so bad. But now I forgot it. Uh, in my age, it, it's very difficult to. Uh, to start again English. <laughs> yeah, and tell me about it. I'm, old, I'm older than you are, Vlad, so you'll get no sympathy from me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I agree with you 100% though. It's harder to learn languages when you're older, I think. I agree, or even learn on. Okay, so you're starting to brush up on your English. When you relearn something you've already learned, you brush up on it. Okay, brush okay. up, it's an idiom. Uh, on that note, I'm actually late. I have to go because I have to start my next verbling class right now. I thank you guys for your help and your participation.